click, click, click. Pierre liked the clicking sound of grandmother's needles, but tonight, as he sat in front of the fire, it was different. Something had happened when he returned from school in the afternoon that filled his heart with fear. Grandmother had noticed that Pierre's pockets were bulging, and she suspected something. Grandmother knew that Pierre had a very bad habit. She asked him to empty his pockets, and when a top, a ball, a pencil, and a box of crayons came out, she asked Pierre where he got them. Pierre hung his head in shame and then said, In the other boy's desk and pocket. This must stop, Pierre, said Grandmother. You must learn what a terrible sin this is. The next time I find you taking things which belong to others, I will take one of my knitting needles, heat it in the fire until it is red and then white. I will take your hand that steals and pierce it with the burning needle. This will hurt you very much, Pierre, but I must do as I have said. For many days, Pierre came home with empty pockets, happy in heart. But he was tempted again, and once more came home with bulging pockets. Pierre thought he could keep it a secret from Grandmother, but when he pulled his handkerchief from his pocket, a whistle, and another top fell out. When Grandmother said, Empty your pockets, Pierre, he took out an eraser, a ruler, a pen, and some pennies. Where did you get them? asked Granny with tears in her eyes. Pierre made no reply. Well then, said Grandmother. I must do what I said I would. Grandmother went for her knitting needle, slipping it into the fire of the open stove. She waited a moment. The steel became red, then white. Give me your hand, Pierre, said Grandmother. Pierre was frightened, but he obeyed. Listen, she said, so that you may understand how terrible is your sin. Look now. As she said this, she opened her own hand and drawing the knitting needle from the fire, she put it through her own hand instead of through Pierre's hand. Granny groaned in pain as she drew the needle out. She showed the little thief Pierre her pierced hand. Don't take your eyes from it, said Grandmother, so you will always remember what sin costs one who loves you. Pierre never stole after that day. He never touched anything which did not belong to him. If he was ever tempted, he thought of the dear granny whose hand was pierced instead of his. He thought of the one who loved him and took the punishment for him. God's word says we all, just like Pierre, have sinned. That's found in Romans 3.23. Maybe you've never stole anything. But have you ever told a lie, cheated on a test at school, disobeyed your mother or father, or pouted? All of these are sins. To do or to be anything that God doesn't want us to be is sin. Because we have sinned, God cannot allow sin in heaven. He sent His Son, the Lord Jesus, 
to take the punishment for our sins. God's Word says the punishment for sin is death. Just as Grandmother took Pierre's punishment, Jesus paid the debt for our sins. His hands and feet were pierced with nails because of our sins. To know that Jesus loves us this much should make us stop and think when we are tempted to sin. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, won't you let Him come into your life today? His hands and feet were pierced for you. If you already are a born-again Christian, but have been doing things which were displeasing to God, Jesus died to take your punishment also. Won't you tell Him you are sorry for your sins? 